Hey guys, it's Paul here from Glitch Free Gaming and I'm here to run down my top 5 games of 2017. If you haven't already, then please go check out the podcasts that have been going up along with these videos. There should be 4 of those up by the end of the week, including all of our categories and our final conjoined game of the year. Moving on to my number 5 slot, it's Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Now this game was a big surprise for, I think, all of us here at the podcast, but more so me because I actually picked up a Switch. Now if you've been a long-term fan of the podcast, you will know that I have never been a big Nintendo fan other than Pokemon, and the, I've just fallen in love with the Switch this year, to be honest. I've, I've fallen in love with the Switch. Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, on paper, it shouldn't work. It should never have been as good as it is, but it is a wonderfully fun, changed, mixed-up XCOM-style game. It has some really lovely artwork, some fantastic music. And it is brutally hard at points. It does incrementally increase the um, difficulty as you progress through the game. And it does it to a point where I've, I did find some sections of it very, very hard that you had to sit down and think about. So it's, it's a fairly challenging game, but nonetheless, it's one of my favourites of the year. <laughs> Moving on to my number four slot, it's Assassin's Creed Origins. Now I've actually had more time with that since we've recorded the podcast. Um, it came in at my number four slot, it might have moved up now if we were to redo the podcast because I've played more of it. The game is just wonderful, they, um, they took a break which I think they should do with all Assassin's Creeds now because we've seen that when they do, they do produce a better game. Definitely one of the best Assassin's Creed games they've ever produced. Possibly my favourite since Black Flag. I also did love the Ezio trilogy. The game just has a wonderful open world in Egypt. The the, the entire world is stunning. The storyline is a little different for an Assassin's Creed game. It doesn't have anything to really do with the Assassin's Brotherhood, or at least not as far as I've got forward in the storyline. The only thing tying it to the Assassin's Creed kind of games is the use of an animus in the out of out of animus sections that you go through, but I won't ruin any of those for you because those are pretty fun as well. The story's just great. Um, it's got some lovely tie-ins to other things. There are some microtransactions in the game, but you don't ever actually have to touch them if you don't want to. If you want to they're there if you want to buy yourself some fancy weapons and a mount. I personally have worked towards all of mine and have actually picked up the free in-game Final Fantasy 15 mount which sees me riding around ancient Egypt on a chocobo which is rather fun and the game is just it's an Assassin's Creed game. They've completely overhauled the combat so it's far better than it was. They've overhauled the free running so it's better than it was and you're not constantly jumping around like an idiot because you're hitting the wrong button. It flows a lot better and it's certainly one of the best Assassin's Creed games they've ever made. Moving on to my number three, it's Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Now again, this is a big surprise, mainly because I've never played a Zelda game before and I never ever thought I'd be interested in any of the Zelda games. Breath of the Wild changed that. They completely changed the open world genre. They fixed a lot of problems that the genre had been having. We'd been having oversaturation of open world games over the last few years. Breath of the Wild managed to come in, kick that door down and go, hey, we fixed these problems. It's my first Zelda game and I thoroughly enjoyed it. The shrines are just so fun to go and find. Exploring that open world with all the different areas it has is fantastic. Have I progressed too far in the story? No, because a lot of stuff came out on the tail end of it on the PS4 that I was playing. I did manage to play a good chunk of Zelda during the summer. I thoroughly enjoyed it, but I still need to finish two of the um, main quest major shrines. So I've still got a lot to do in it. Probably why it's only at number three. And at number two is Wolvenstein 2, the new Colossus. Don't mess that one up, I did say the new order in the podcast and messed that up gloriously. I was corrected by Kieran though. I just think this game is fantastic. Um, it 
Right, it moves on from the first game where they've completely redone Wolvenstein and just made it fantastic. The shooting is on point, the weapons are super fun to use, the storyline is great and it points absolutely zany. Super close to the bone in some respects with the current political climate in the world and it's just super super fun. I'm glad that they had the balls to put the story out there that they have put out there in this game and I think that's probably probably why it is in at my number two slot. I love the game, I am now playing DLC and think it is fantastic as well. Hopefully they do make a third one. I don't think this game has sold as well as the first one, but I really do hope they make a third. And in at number one, my game of the year for 2017, my personal game of the year for 2017, is Mario Odyssey. Now, again, the last Mario game I played was probably on the Game Boy before this, and I had no real interest outside of that. Um, I picked up the Switch, and I kept watching the trailers for Mario Odyssey after I got the Switch and said, I might as well get it, it does look fun. That game is superb. The open-worldness of the levels, it's fantastic, they're giant, absolutely giant for a Mario game. Each, real, each world itself is absolutely unique, brilliantly coloured, vibrant, some of the nicest worlds I've ever seen in a game, super well thought out. The game, while possibly, I think, a little easy in parts, once you complete the main quest line and you open it up into the post game, it does get a lot harder and there's a lot more to do to go and find more power moons. Is it worth the money? Yes, it definitely is. It's my game of the year for the reason of I put a good 15 hours into that game and I didn't think I'd put 15 hours into that game. I was playing it and having so much fun that I was like, oh, it's over. And I don't really play the post game in a lot of games. I have played a lot of the post game in Mario Odyssey because I just love going back and exploring those worlds and finding new areas and beating new puzzles. And it's just absolutely fantastic. That's it from me, guys. That is my top five games of the year. We do have top 10 lists. If you want to hear those, then do listen to day four of our Game of the Year podcasts. My top ten list will be in there along with Kieran's and Mike's. Also, check out the other two videos that are going up with their top five games of the year as well. And we will catch you in the next podcast. Thank you.